We're live. Well, good evening. <laughs> Here we are. God is in the house. He is. We are in the sunroom. We are in the house. We are in the house. God is in the house. You know, uh, you know, God's house is always a healing house. Mm. Did you know that God's house is always a healing house? You should go to our website. Well, if God's in it, then he's Yeah, it's a healing right? house. Yeah, and Anthony, our uh, web guy, he's put up something there in regards to um, a, a prophetic word that Apostle Vincent Poole gave us in 2022, about November, December, saying he really sees mm. Holy Spirit Sands as a house of healing. Mm. And praise God, we're... We're going to hold on to that because we have a whole bunch of people that need healing well, here and true. around the world. So a healing true. house is a good place, right? And God being Harry the healer. House. Yep, God being the healer. Yes. So uh, is healing, uh, you know, healing has to have some element of faith, mm -hmm. right? So uh, faith yes. is important in healing. Yes. And why is that? To believe and to trust the one who is the healer. Amen. Yes. And healing is is the children's bread. That's right. And what about the formula that I came up with about 25 years ago? FBR is equal to CTCC. Yeah, what about it? We'll talk about that later. Maybe today. Yeah. Is that a mystery? Are you a mystery sometimes? Absolutely. Sometimes mysteries are fun. Yeah. That's what this is about. The mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ today. Mm. Uh -huh. There's a number of things that we are going to discuss in regards to um, as far as a mystery is, is concerned. I looked up mystery here, and oh, uh, I'd good. like to get your response in regards to could be our relationship or some other relationship you have. Or... <laughs> yeah, that would be a mystery. Okay, <laughs> so uh, it says here a mystery is... Uh, based on a plural noun, sometimes that is difficult or impossible to understand or to explain the mysteries of some things. Mm -hmm. So that's the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to look at that in Ephesians chapter 6, 19 and 20. We're going to look at it also in Ephesians chapter 3, all chapter 3. We're going to look at that. Uh, of the different mi mi mysteries. We're also going to go to Mark uh, chapter uh, 4, verse 15. We're going to look at the mysteries, and we're going to also talk about boldness and different other applications of mystery. Um, but uh, the mystery, uh, the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you know, the mystery of the gospel. Wow. Did, did the mystery have the Pharisees? kind of confused they certainly couldn't figure it out because because Jesus talked in code in parables he, yes. he, he well he talked in parables yeah that were like a code that was like a mystery that they couldn't figure out and why was that because they didn't have the understanding they had too they were too heavy uh, they had too much religion not to understand relationship with the Father. So it was a mystery to them. Okay. And it was right in their face. The Messiah was right in their face and they couldn't see the magnificence of the majesty of Adonai Elohim and they only would look at the m mystery of it. Mm -hmm. Well, that was pretty good. The devil couldn't figure it out either because it was a mystery and we're going to talk, we're going to talk about that. So, um, another uh, explanation or similar words, uh, it's a condition or, uh, or quality of making and being a very secret, making it a very secret or strange or difficult to explain. Mm -hmm. Is that the way you've tried to explain me at times? I don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> There's no point. Why? What do you mean? <laughs> I think the word mystery might have been invented with you. I don't know. <laughs> Why? No. You asked a question. Yeah. Well, you you figured it out. <laughs> yeah. Don't even try to explain you. Oh, okay. So, mystery has some interesting ways of explaining things. Okay. Here's another one. All right. 
uh, a person or thing whose identity or nature is puzzling or unknown. Is that what you're trying to say? Mm. That's a mystery. For sure, Jesus was a mystery to those Pharisees because mm. wow. they definitely could not. They they didn't know him. So they didn't know how to figure out even how to know him. So there was no explanation. Okay, some of the Pharisees got it, like Nicodemus, mm -hmm. you know, and some of the business, you know. But for the larger part, some, yeah. yeah. But they had had hard time maybe trying to figure it out too. How, how do I get back into my mother's womb to be born again? Mm -hmm. It was a mystery. Like right. physically, couldn't figure it out spiritually. Yeah. But when he when when oh yeah when, when Jesus looked in the eye into the eyes mm -hmm. of those and says, "Follow me." Right. Was there any mystery to those who he called? Well, they understood the direct. Invitation. It was a direct invitation. It wasn't clouded in other wording to make it a mystery so much. Yeah, th they saw him as a rabbi. Not all of them saw him as the Messiah, but they. He says, "Follow me," and looked into their eyes, and they followed him. Okay. Isn't that kind of similar with me? You looked into my eyes, and <laughs> oh, 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 brother, there's a stretch and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> What do you mean a stretch and a half? <laughs> what are you talking about? What do you mean? You were the one who made the comment. Well, I, I don't think it's a stretch and a half. Oh, two stretches. <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying that that it's a real mystery. What is a mystery? A, a, a puzzling object. Well, your comment was looking into your eyes. Well, yes. And you followed me, and Jesus says, follow me, and they followed him. Uh -huh. Now, they weren't puzzled, but you weren't puzzled either. You just kind of... So... Yeah, okay, okay, here we go. All right. So, but that's one of the things about the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it, it was revealed to Peter in a moment of, let's say... Uh, under the anointing of heaven coming down and, and, and Yeshua, Jesus saying to Peter, that could only come to your understanding because it had to be revealed by the Father in heaven mm -hmm. for you to understand that I am the Messiah. Mm -hmm. So the mystery was solved. Okay. For how long? Until he said, get behind me, Satan? Hmm. Well, I, I think there's a lot of mystery that carries on even on into this day and age that people don't know how to follow him sometimes or don't understand. Okay, and that's that's a very good point on this because some people get some revelation and they get like some of the revelation and then they try to put their own thought into it or their flesh comes into it and Jesus says, <laughs> or Yeshua says, um, that part needs to be fixed or to be given over, right? Because you're, 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 uh, get behind me, Satan. In other words, Peter okay. says, you're, you're not going to die, I'll die for you. Or, you okay, know. so how does that work in with the mystery here? Well, Peter was puzzled. Like he, he came up with the right answer, but uh, then. It was awesome the answer he came up with, but it didn't. It, it didn't take all that long, like a New York minute, before he was um, making a comment that was puzzling. You know how he was saying something so awesome in awe out of one side of his lips, it seemed, and then a moment later, Jesus is saying, "Get behind me, Satan." Mm -hmm. You know, so it's kind of a puzzling position that there at Mount Hermon. You know, okay. we're doing that. So sometimes you get puzzled. Like, um, and the reason I'm saying that, uh, you, you might have, you might get some great revelation, and everything's going great, and and everything's going down the right track, based on the Holy Spirit within you, and then all of a sudden you go down and you grab some something that's still your flesh inside, and causes a puzzling comment, mm 
that doesn't line up with the Holy Spirit that's coming out of you. Can that happen? Can people be puzzling? It's all of a sudden like they're moving in the Spirit of God and all of a sudden the next day they, may, they come up with a, a question or, or a remark that doesn't make any sense at all because it comes from their flesh. Is that puzzling? How can, how can it be both? Right now, whatever you're talking about is puzzling to me. Yeah. Okay. So I made my point. Maybe. I did. Talking about something that's really not relevant to anything. Oh, it is relevant. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, A religious belief based on divine revelation, especially one regarded as beyond human understanding, the mystery of Christ. Okay. So that's where we're going. Okay. Already. All right. So then. There's some more things here, but we did get some chuckles. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ralph was saying that somebody's giggly pin was going to get stuck. (laughs) Is your giggly pin kind of smiling? Or is somebody out there really laughing? That that's the mystery. And I bet yeah. you somebody, somebody's enjoying your expressions. Okay. So the mystery, um, let, let, let's go. T- um, okay, so I'm going to interject. All right. So you've, you've, you've talked about Jesus, you know, speaking to the disciples, follow me, right? And how, you know, how much understanding did they have and was that a mystery and so on? So I'm going to say we can open up with, like really open up, with um, can I get this one in before you do that? I don't know. Because I was kind of waiting for this one. Because oh. I think this can be good. All right, go for it. Because I didn't want to baffle you. I didn't want to bamboozle you, but I did. I wanted to be. I wanted to make it puzzling, because one of the uh, descriptions of a mystery, mm-hmm. the practices or the skills or the lore of particular or a particular trade or. Act- or activity that is regarded as baffling to those without specialized knowledge in understanding what the mystery is all about. Because they're too analytical. They have to have the analytical understanding. They don't trust the Holy Spirit. It baffles them. Okay, is that a good one? Am I still am I still a mystery? Honey, there are days. Okay. I just wanted Some days to, more than others. I just wanted to clarify a couple of things there and, and oh look at that. She's smiling. Okay. So so you were you you're talking about following Jesus we're Yeah, um, following and, Jesus and the mystery of the gospel of Jesus. Yeah, and we're gonna Christ. go through that. And so later. then we can speak about our or even thank the Lord for the examples of the like walking as Jesus walked. Yeah. And so, um, so we can say based on based on that and the, the mystery of the gospel, I thank you, Father, for the example of the life of Jesus. Amen. Help me, help each one of us to follow in His steps. For I know that whoever truly follows him will not work, walk in darkness, so mm-hmm. then that wouldn't be mysterious, but will have the light of life. Mm. Forgive me, Father, for the times that I have chosen darkness mm. over the light of your presence. Amen. So there is a place there that each one of us, you know, we, if we're honest with ourselves and with God, will acknowledge that we have chosen darkness over the light of his presence Mm. Ah. help me Lord God to love you above all others Mm. and all other things may I listen to your voice be known by you and follow you now for some people that could be a mystery may I not be a stumbling block in anyone's path or be discredited as your disciple this day because of my words or actions For you have said in your word that whoever claims to live in Jesus must walk as he did. 
So in that, it's pretty clear, not necessarily a mystery, but for some that are not in that place and ready to open hearts up to him, then that will be a mystery. So Lord, I just say, may I become a disciple who, like the Apostle Paul, can say to others without boasting, follow my example, mm-hmm. as I follow the example of Christ. Mm. Empower me by your Spirit, and we need Holy Spirit, to be an example of Jesus in my home, maybe in our place of work, neighborhood or school, everywhere that we go about our days. May my encounters with friends and strangers alike be seasoned with the presence of Christ. And may I fix my thoughts and my eyes on him. Mm. In everything may I set an example by doing what is good. Even in the face of suffering, may I be an example of patience. Mm -hmm. And Father, I ask that you would give me opportunity to entrust to someone else all that you are teaching and and showing me. Huh. May I ask, whether I ask that you would give me the opportunity to entrust to someone else all that you are teaching and showing me, that I might truly become a disciple who makes disciples. Amen. As one who follows you, Lord, may I continue in faith and stand firm, never moving from the hope held out to me in the gospel. So part of that The mystery is really that there is no mystery, but there's hope. There's hope in the gospel. Remind me that as your disciple, I have been called to the ministry and message of reconciliation as Christ's ambassador. Mm -hmm. May I be a worthy vessel through whom you can implore others to be reconciled to Christ. That lasting spiritual fruit may be born out of my life. And all this I would ask in your mighty name, Jesus. So we we do, we just say, Lord, show us, Holy Spirit, reveal where there has been those times in our lives we have walked in darkness and chosen darkness over light so that we would be truly one who can walk as an example of how Jesus walks and then demystify that gospel because they will see in us who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes not so much a mystery. Yeah, and, and hard to figure out. And part of that mystery when I was talking about Peter, mm-hmm. where it was revealed to him by the Father in heaven that Yeshua, like Jesus, was the Messiah. Mm-hmm. So he was in the light. He was he was flowing in the holy, what would be in truth and in light mm-hmm. and in spirit. Right. But moments later, he's in his flesh. And he's in darkness. And Jesus says immediately to the person who said, that revelation you got was from the Father, but he still had to rebuke Satan out of him. So the, there was still darkness in him, but the light came out. And that, and, and we, as in discipleship and training, uh, you know, on our Saturdays, uh, you know, the Apostolic Resurrection Life Discipleship and Training Center, mm-hmm. these are some of the things that we uh, train and discuss on. And if you go to the website... And you go to uh, you, on the on the left hand side the widgets. It has Saturday uh, afternoons 1:30 Apostolic Arc. Uh, uh, Pastor Ralph is going to be uh, doing a whole bunch of teachings there on holiness and tabernacle and and uh, a series, a series, series of things in there. But read through everything that we have on Arc from top to from end end of it to the, from the start to the end. Everything that's on that page. I put there for a specific reason for apostolic resurrection life, discipleship and training to challenge you. There's nothing there that's not by mistake. And some of, some of it will bring out the light and some of it I guarantee you will bring out the darkness in you. Hmm. Because you do not want to be... Well, I shouldn't say that. There may be some defiance or there may be something hidden inside you uh, like a child, have, have you ever known the child to be defiant? But he's still a good child. He just needs some correction. Mm-hmm. So the apostolic resurrection, like discipleship and training, is God disciples and trains and disciplines those He loves, so that they can follow the right way and not go on your own path. Mm-hmm. So I challenge you to do that. Uh, you might even find our faith statement and mission statement there. 
And if you're part of Resurrection Life Ministries or Holy Spirit Sands, uh, you're going to be tested because I'm going to be asking you, what is our faith statement? And can you explain that to somebody else? Every step of it. That's discipleship, isn't it? And it's all laid out there. And then as far as uh, Resurrection Life declare his glory, that is a that's all designed for a specific direction on worship and the lifestyle of worship and we're teaching on that on, on Saturday evenings go to Holy Spirit Sands it's all about coming together in the ecclesia as the, as the, as the church and assembling together God is in the house Life application study is about Bible. Taking this Bible, the Word of God, making it alive and challenging you in a life application study where you can put it into work and place and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ as we go forward in the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So if on our website, right from the beginning for 33 years, it says, we follow Jesus. We're about the Father's business. Hmm. Read, read the full page. Go through the full page. It's going to challenge you. And, I, and I've had people call me back and say, are you telling me you're an apostle? Are you, are you telling me that you're a prophet? I don't have to tell you anything. It's not me that has made me an apostle or a prophet or anything else. It's the Lord. And they will know them by their fruit. And if after 33 years in different parts, some... Uh, around the world we've walked in all five of the offices and we continue to walk in all five together so um, I challenge you read each page from top to bottom and make notes and where you're challenged where you have questions write it down and the Holy Spirit will answer to you mm -hmm. because the religious spirit is going to challenge you as it did Jesus because the religious spirit wants to control you and you need freedom in the Holy Spirit. So let's look at let's look at the whole armor of God in uh, Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to start off with verses 19 and 20. okay and I'm going to break this I'm going to break this down into three different segments. I don't know if we're going to, going to teach in all three, but I'm going to give you the breakdown of the three. 19 and 20. Uh, talks about um, when we, as far as the mystery is concerned, it talks about as warriors or protectors of the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So 19 and 20 means there is a place of maturity of what we've had to grow and be discipled in because in verses, uh, chapter 6, verses 1 to 5, it talks to you and talks to me as being a child. In other words, Paul is saying, okay, in, in verses 1 to 5, you have to, you're have you starting out as a child or as children. In Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 6, mm -hmm. verse, okay, from 1 to 5. Okay. And then from uh, 5 to 9, he talks to us as a bond servant. Okay? In other words, you're going from a child, but you're going into a place of servanthood yet. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, you're not a son yet necessarily in other words you don't have the full inheritance but you're working towards a being a good, a good servant or a bond servant okay or, or just someone who is an employee by the looks of things yeah right? yeah, yeah it's step by step by step what do you, so you so you're saying to yourself I don't get I, I don't get to go right to 19 and 20 and be and be a warrior and and, and be a uh, be a protector without going through steps one to five and five to nine. Well, like well what do you think? Like working your way up. Is that kind of... The kind well, of you thing? have to be discipled on the basics. You have to be brilliant on the basics. Yes. Because you're going to be challenged. And if you're challenged, how are you going to stand if you're not standing on something that's not concrete? Yes. Okay. So, so we're... And then verses 10 to 20. Uh, you know, 10 to 20 is all about maturity. It's all about being warriors in the spirit. Yeah! And be protected like and, and be the armor of God. protectors and so on of the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And but he chooses us as ambassadors. Now can I put your armor on? It would not fit. 
Mm. So we, this is something we need to take up for ourselves. Mm. Have you ever seen a child walking around with some fake kind of play armor and uh, having some sort of play games? Like dress up. Like dress up thing? Girls or, you know, particularly. Whatever it is. Well, uh, when, when we do the full study on the armor of God, uh, and, and, and like as far as chap- Ephesians chapter 6, 1 to 5, it, it breaks down. I, I love it the way uh, Paul breaks it down in, in, in the first four verses is that you, you are a child and you need to be you need to be corrected you need to be discipled you need to be I'm going to have to change your diapers okay so is that a mystery no not really okay but there there in other words I have to prepare you to handle what the mystery is in verses 19 and 20 you have to grow into it. So do you, do you want to read verses 1 to 4? So this is like, he seems to be speaking to children or maybe they're young in the Lord perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Maybe a, It's a discipleship and that that's what discipleship training is about. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this is the New Living Translation. Um, Good, that's what I got right here. Good. Oh, is it? Yeah, up here. Um, so, children, obey your parents because you belong to the Lord. For this is the right thing to do. So it could be kids, like like chronologically, or it could be those who are new and young in the Lord. What if it's somebody who's 20 years in the Lord, but they've never grown? They've only been one year at a time for 20 years, but they're still one year in the Lord, and they haven't matured. Mm. It's those guys, too. So in verse 2, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. Mm. Now that seems to be the actual honoring your natural parents. That's right. So in the natural, your the family that you are either born into or adopted into or whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. um, whoever has raised you or so on, but particularly your you know your biological um, or your adopted, right. honor your father and mo- mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. Mm-hmm. Verse 4, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Mm-hmm. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. And that discipline is a discipling. Right? And in, in training them. Well, okay, so for Jason and Kelly, when they did something wrong, okay, was it better for us to say, okay, go to your room. Uh, we want you to do this. That we'll talk to you later on about this. Or if it was, it, we wanted them to sweat about it. We wanted them to think about it mm-hmm. before we went up and did the correction. Mm-hmm. So, uh, in other words, discipleship and correction needs to be in love, and it needs to be methodical, and it needs to be well in, uh, based on the word the, of God too. Just, I'm just, just saying. Yeah. It, it, it not brash. Right. Okay. So a discipline, a, a direction, and instruction, and it's as the Lord, how the Lord would instruct, based yeah. on this. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean that. So it's, that can be looked at in many different ways. Yeah, and 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 uh, you know the, the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ is some people have been raised by parents. Uh, that have never had a toolbox to know how, or, or they, they, they've had a toolbox, but they haven't had the right tools in the toolbox on how to handle this situation because they, they grew up in a dysfunctional family, mm-hmm. like me. Yeah, but, and this is specifically talking to the biological or those who are the stand-in I mean. fathers. Okay. You know, and, and like the Passion translation in this verse 4, fathers, don't exasperate your children but raise them up with loving discipline and counsel that brings the revelation of our Lord. And we, and we, really, and we really tried to do that. Yes, did we yeah. mess up? Yeah, we yeah, did. Yeah, but we really tried. And our kids, our kids are great, and our grandkids are great. Mm-hmm. So, praise the Lord. That's my point. So when we get into bond servants and the masters, uh, this is kind of like, this is going to make more sense uh, if you just read now 5 to 9. Okay. So I'm going to stick with the Passion Translation here. Okay. Um, Those who are employed 
should listen to their employers and obey their instructions with great respect and honor. Serve them with humility in your hearts as though you were working for the master. Always do what is right and not only when others are watching so that you may please Christ and not men. Be assured that anything... Oh, is that right? Oh, sorry, I missed a beat there. Verse 7. Serve your employers wholeheartedly and with love, as though you were serving Christ and not men. Oh, I guess I didn't. Be assured that anything you do that is beautiful and excellent will be repaid by our Lord, whether you are an employee or an employer. And to the caretakers of the flock, I say... Do what is right with your people by forgiving them when they offend you. For you know there is a master in heaven that shows no favoritism. So whether you're the caretaker of the flock, the pastor, the overseer, the, the leader of, of the people, do what is right with your people by forgiving them when they offend you. Understand they will offend you. Mm -hmm. For you know there is a master in heaven that shows no favoritism. So whether you're the caretaker or the person in the flock. God doesn't pick favorites. Yeah. Do you think this is a mystery in the body of Christ? <laughs> of of well, how to disciple of, people? In yeah. some of the governing structures that there are, I suppose you could Absolutely. say. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So I, I know this is basic, but it's important for us to be, because we're going to go deeper now. We're going to go, right, let's let's just go to 19 and 20 right now. We're going to skip from 10 okay. uh, to eight, um, right. 18. We're going to do 19 and 20 okay. because we're doing all the right steps. We're going all the, all the way through it. And uh, as far as putting on the armor of God, okay, we'll come back to that. Maybe later you guys can study that. But what the focus here mm -hmm. is is looking at some some specific words that are going to jump out, either uh, in the New King James or or Passion or King James or Amplified or New Living Translated. I want you to look for the word boldness because that's going to be a word that we're going to be looking at over the next 45 minutes or so. And the other word that's going to uh, come out of this is mystery of the gospel. And it, the other word is ambassador, uh, and uh, so let, let's let's just see what translations uh, bring that through. Okay. Okay. So, verse nineteen and twenty. Nineteen and twenty, and yeah. your passion. Yeah. So this actually takes part of part of eighteen. Okay, you can do eighteen. Eighteen as well. That's so all right. Pray passionately in the spirit, as you constantly in intercede with every form of prayer at all times. Pray the blessings of God upon all believe all his believers. And pray also that God's revelation would be released through me every time I preach the wonderful mystery of the hope-filled gospel. So it's not a heavy-laden do's and don'ts gospel, it's a hope-filled gospel. Mm -hmm. Yes, pray that I may preach the wonderful news of God's kingdom with bold freedom at every opportunity. Even though I am chained as a prisoner, I am his ambassador. Okay, so we got word revelation mm -hmm. there. Okay, yeah. have the revelation of this. God's revelation, yeah. yeah. But that I may open my mouth boldly mm -hmm. and make known the mystery of the gospel. Okay, that's that's the uh, New King James. Mm -hmm. And you, yours is a little different, but uh, in, in the New Living Translation, it says, pray in the Spirit at all times in verse 18. Stay alert and be persistent in the prayers of all the believers everywhere. And pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly, boldly, boldly explain, Adonize God's mysterious plan that the good news is for the Jews and the Gentiles alike. Uh, it says, I am in chains now, still preaching the message of God God's ambassador. Isn't that interesting? Ambassador in chains. So pray that I will keep on speaking boldly for him as I should. So whether we are ambassadors in chains from heaven, okay? And when you're an ambassador, that means you have complete rights. 
uh, the representative of the I'll person, in, that person in the authority. Yeah. So if you're an ambassador, uh, if you're an ambassador of China, and you're in Canada, can the ambassador of China uh, be tried for any illegal things in Canada? No, because he's he's always under the covering of the rules of China. Right. He's the ambassador. We are under the rules of the ambassador of heaven, mm -hmm. and we're and we're chained to it. And we need to speak boldly the mystery of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to get that into, into in Ephesians chapter 3 um, so that we're accurate on these things. So is, that, that mystery is starting to... Isn't that a mystery? When, when, okay, read uh, verses 10 to 18 now, but put on the whole armor of God. Isn't, is that a mystery? For people to put on the armor of God when they, they can't see things in the spirit and they're putting on these things in faith that they actually dressing up in these, this spiritual protection and they're putting in spiritual uh, weapons in their hands and in their mouth for what reason? So that they're protectors, they're warriors they're no longer children They've, they've earned the right to put on the armor of God. As a child, you can't put on the armor of God because you can't go into the into battle and not know and be trained properly. Make sense? And you have to be in right relationship. Now, a bond servant too. You, if you go do uh, the study on a bond servant, they would they would take an awl and they would uh, they would do something to their ear. Mm -hmm. And well, and, and ball, yeah. huh? Like taken almost like through the against the doorpost or whatever, but uh, to put a hole through and then <coughs> that they were that they are. Oh, then, Ralph's got this one. Yeah, I, 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 I can see yeah, his Ralph, eyes jumping. Go yeah, ahead, Ralph. Ralph can handle that one. Well, I uh, when. Um, someone had a debt to a rich man and he couldn't pay it right. very often he was put into he was made a bond servant he was set apart for a period of time to earn whatever debt he had now as time went on if he loved his master mm. and I mean the master was already providing with housing and right. food and this guy was working off his debt. Yeah. Now, when the time came that the debt was paid, he could, the servant could, if he loved his master, and his master had treated him very well, mm -hmm. and many did, mm -hmm. uh, he could ask his master or declare to his master that he wanted to remain his servant forever. So they went to the elders at the gate and the servant declared that he wanted to be made a bond servant forever oh. to this master. Mm. Okay? So they literally put his ear up against the post mm -hmm. and drove an all through it. So he was permanently marked as a bond servant. And he served this master the rest of his life because he loved him. And that's a, such a wonderful type. When we give our hearts to the Lord completely and totally, mm -hmm. we become a bond servant for life to serve this new master. So anybody yeah, putting the armor on him. has got the all in their ear and they're saying, I am a son. Yeah. That serves. Amen. My 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 master, my father. You get that? What do you call that kind of son? Is it? What do you call it when you kind of adopt a son? What's another name for it? I'm not sure where you're going. No. Well, um, I'll, it'll come to me. I'm just the, the you, you, surrogate. It's almost like they become a surrogate son but don't have all the rights of a son, but they're still a surrogate son. 
because of the all, and they're going to serve the Father for the rest of their life and the, and, and the Master. So in this situation, when we become bond servants, we, we're, we're basically being marked for, from now to all eternity that we are, um, we are a son <laughs> that has been adopted by the Father through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're, you know, we're, we're, we are brothers with Jesus. We're sons. And, and we have an all mark because we've made that dedication. And because we've made that dedication, that puts us into a place of servanthood that allows, and we've been trained to take up the whole armor of God. Because we're gonna, we are gonna fight for the master. Mm. We're not gonna fight for the enemy, mm. and we're trained uh, to be strong, and not to, well, as Joshua would stand and be courageous, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so all, so read the, if we read the armor here, we're standing to be courageous. But each and every one of you men and women have been marked with the all mm. as a bond servant for eternity, as son, mm. as sons of, of the Most High. Mm -hmm. You see and it? You serve for love. Serve for right. love. Out of duty. It's right. A serve, yeah. serve. Yes. This is not a servitude yeah. right. for bondage. Yeah. This is for love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, I, and I'm going to teach on that. Uh, actually, I'm going to teach on that Saturday night difference between uh, 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 Proscaneo and Latrio. Mm. Bond, as far as bond servant and. Anyway, I'm going to teach on that Saturday night. But anyway, there's, there's, there, okay. So if you want to read from, so, so we have qualified. Uh, everything is right. So now we're going to be trained up, and we're going to put on the, um, we're going to take up the armor of God. Do you want to read that uh, from 10 to 18? Um, yeah. So. Now, for, now, my beloved ones, I have saved these most important truths for last. Be supernaturally infused with strength through, through your life union with the Lord Jesus. Stand victorious with the force of his explosive power. So there's no mystery anymore. Flowing in and through you. In regard to your relationship, you're following him. You see? Yeah, there's no fog. In other words, there's complete commitment here and covenant. Commitment and covenant to Jesus. Okay. Um, put on God's complete set of armor mm -hmm. provided for us so that you will be protected as you fight against the evil strategies of the accused. Accuser. Sorry. Your hand-to-hand -hand combat is not with human beings, but with the highest principalities and authorities operating in rebellion under the heavenly realms. Mm. For they are a powerful class of demon gods and evil spirits that hold this dark world in bondage. Because of this, you must wear all the armor that God provides so you're protected as you confront the slanderer. For you are destined for all things and will rise victorious. Verse 14, put on truth as a belt to strengthen you to stand in triumph. Put on holiness as the protective armor that covers your heart. Stand on your feet alert, and then you'll always be ready to share the blessings of peace. In every battle, take faith as your wraparound shield, for it is able to extinguish the blazing arrows coming at you from the evil one. Embrace the power of salvation's full deliverance like a helmet to protect your thoughts from lies. Hmm. And take the mighty razor sharp spirit sword of the spoken word of God. And then it goes on to pray passionately in the spirit. Yeah, so I'm just saying, is this a mystery to some people sitting in church today? Well, if they don't know their word and haven't uh, been trained up in the, the word and uh, discipled, it could be. So, so if they are still a child you know if they're still in childish things how can they be prepared to put on the armor of God for mature things that the Lord has for a man and woman so still really just drinking the milk of the word That's but right. not the meat and 
and maybe only understanding the logos of it, but not understanding the rhema. Right. You know, when you said the, put on belt of truth, you know, somebody's thinking, well, what kind of what, what does that belt look like? I'm trying to put on a belt. I, I got a belt on right now. Is it like this belt? You know, like like. So we're not going to get into that teaching, but I, but both physically, naturally, and spiritually, all things things are happening, and your eyes have to be opened up to it because I can guarantee you, the devil and his horde can see you in it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all you that are mature, they see you dressed up that way when you put the armor on. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're going to attack you? Well, they'll use fiery darts to try to wear you down, but it doesn't look like they're going to confront you. They're hoping you're still going to be like a child and, and say this is nonsense and just make yourself easy prey. Mm -hmm. For oh, I want, What would easy prey? I wonder if I can bring discouragement to that child. I wonder if I can bring some rebellion into that child. Right? I wonder if I can bring some disobedience into that child. I wonder if I can bring, oh, uh, so the yeah. child is acting like a child and not a, a man or a woman of God. Oh, is that you right now? Well, I think you should repent and say, Lord, here I am. Help me grow up to what you called me to be as a son and daughter of the Most High. I want to grow in you, Jesus, Yeshua Mashiach. I want to grow in the understanding and the revelation of what this means to follow you. When Jesus comes, it says he's coming is he coming as a child, as a babe in the manger in his, in, in his second coming? Or is he coming as the Lion of Judah? Is he coming as a warrior? And it says those who will be following them. Is it a bunch of little kids uh, playing games and following him? No, it's warriors coming to do and follow, and we don't have to do a thing. We just have to be dressed up and ready and prepared. Are you dressed up and ready and prepared? Are you following Jesus? He is putting you in a position to prepare you to be in a place so that you can follow him in all things that he is going to be at point on. And whatever that point is, and whatever whatever he when he comes back in in revelation and he's on on that white horse. He's dressed up as a, and so will you be if you're following him into battle. And I pray and I thank the Lord that I'm being prepared to be one of them. And I believe that Leslie's a little warrior. Not little. I'm just saying. Yeah. And each and every one who is being discipled and trained in resurrection life ministries around the world is being trained up for that. Amen. Not for some gain, but to follow the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lion of Judah. Is that still a mystery to you? Is it still a mystery to you what the ecclesia is about? And Jesus is the cornerstone of the ecclesia and the fivefold ministry is getting ready it's not children that's going into the gate. It's mature, mature sons and daughters of the Most High that are prepared and ready to do what God has called them to do as watchmen, as warriors, as it, as it says in 19 and 20. You ready? You sir are. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, let's flip back to. So is that a mystery to you? That's just some of the some of the things that we've trained. Some of the people. That, that are part of our ministry around the world when we've taught on these things no problem some of you may be in a church that never has even taught this my question is to you why have you not been taught this and if you've been in church for 20 years and never pursued this understanding and asking the Holy Spirit about putting on the armor of God why have you chose not to grow and follow Jesus in the word of God that is alive? The word of God is alive. As it says in John chapter 1, verses 
12 to 14. The living word alive. We've got to follow the living word alive. Is that a mystery? I thought, I, how, how can I follow this book? I, all I do is bang my head against it. How can I follow it? It's the revelation and the understanding of this being alive. This is the word of God. That's alive. Okay. All right. Let's go to uh, Ephesians chapter 3. Flip the thing back. All right. Uh, I, I know we're, we're in the month of Shavet. And the month of Shavet is all about sanctification. It's all, you know, it, it's, it's purifying and getting yourself sanctified. And, and it also talks about being in seated in heavenly places in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. So if you, if, you, if you can't figure out this mystery in Ephesians 2, verse 6, it says that you're seated in heavenly, in, in heavenly, in the same seat, in the same throne as Jesus. You're, we're in the same throne on the right hand of God the Father. And it says that we have every inheritance of the Son of the Most Living God. Now what is that? Is that a mystery? Our carnal minds may not totally be able to grasp it, to understand it, but when you follow and have faith in the Lord, you believe it because it's the word of God. He has raised us up together, verse 6, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Heavenly places in Christ Jesus. No, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Oh, 2. Okay. I know, we're going to go to 3. But I, all right. if we're in the month of Shavet, and, and it's all about sanctification. It's also uh, uh, being in that place as sons and daughters of the Most High. But we're seated in the same throne as Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, on the right hand of Adonai Elohim. <laughs> what have you got? Ephesians 2, verse 6. He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm, for we are now co-seated as one with Christ. Co so we're, not, we're not even on our own, we're as one with Christ. We are co-seated, we share this, you know, it's being seated together as one with Christ. Wow. It's interesting. That's, you know, that's all part of the mystery. Mm -hmm. How yeah. we can have Christ in us right. and be in Christ. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ. Right. Yeah. This is a mystery. Like how? That's how. How can, can you be in two places? How can I? One. How can I be in Him and Him be in me? Right. Well, it, this it, is the it, Holy it, Spirit. Yes. The Holy Spirit is in you, but your spirit is in heaven. Yeah. Well, in, in Jesus. We're in connected. Jesus. In, in We're him. connected. Amen. Yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. Mm -hmm. We're one. Amen. Oh. Which was an answer to his prayer anyway, Father. Let us be one even as we That's are right. Amen. Amen. That's right. And uh, um, there's um, in, in, in also some of the scriptures, it also says that you have full inheritance. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. that means the, the all in the ear, you know, is that that is a surrogate the son? son. No, I, is a surrogate son that says, "I'm going to follow you because I love you." Mm -hmm. This one here says, "You're my son." Amen. What did I have to do for it? Well, you've surrendered and give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you, so we're one. So, okay, so so it's a mystery. <laughs> some people have, uh, you know, I've been, some people get challenged by that. And uh, because they can't figure out the quantum physics of it, you know, e is equal to m c squared. Like, how does, you know, how does that equation work? Well, at light speed, it works. Yeah. And the really awesome thing about that is that our Creator is outside of time. <laughs> he created yes. time. Yes. 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 So, I mean, time exists inside of him. Mm. 
Yeah, so that's but the I point. That, yeah. So now we're we are seated in heavenly places in a, in eternity mm. in an eternal time mm. because we have resurrection life, as Jesus said to to Martha in uh, in in John eleven twenty five. I am, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. You shall not die if you believe in me. Do you believe this, Martha? Do you believe this, Leslie? Do you believe this, Mary? I sure do. <laughs> but I, I, I'm the mystery of the gospel. Okay, so let's let's go to. Um, it, these are some mind benders. Are they puzzling? You know, some of the descriptions I gave is it just is it is it hard to figure out? Some of these puzzling things. Yes, it is. So, um, let's start off in, in chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Let's read from uh, 1 to 7. Okay. Beloved friends, because of my love, love for Jesus Christ, I am now his prisoner for the sake of all of you who are not Jews, so that you will hear the gospel that God has entrusted to me to share with you. For this wonderful mystery... Mm. which I briefly described, was given to me by divine revelation, so that whenever you read it, you will be able to understand my revelation and insight into the secret mystery of the Messiah. Okay, so when we were looking at Ephesians six nineteen and 20, there were some words I said, revelation, boldness, right? Uh, the boldness is going to come through revelation, ambassador, different things, uh, power. Okay, so keep going. Verse 3, again, okay. 3 and 4. So verse 3, For this wonderful mystery, which I briefly described, was given to me by divine revelation, so that whenever you read it, you will be able to understand my revelation and insight into wow. the secret mystery of the Messiah. Wow. In the New King James, and by which you, and by which when you read... You will understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So, in other words, these words need to come alive. If they're just words on the on the paper, uh, it, 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 it's going to be no different than the Pharisees. They couldn't understand the parables. But if you come to the place of having the revelation in the Holy Spirit to see this, because the, the devil couldn't figure this out, or else he wouldn't have crucified Christ. He would, so there would be no mystery of the gospel. It was hidden from the devil and was hidden from the religious spirit. Do you think it's hidden from the religious spirit again today? Absolutely. Absolutely. Hallelujah. So, okay, go from f 5 to 7 now. Okay. Yeah, so now I've switched over to the New Living again, like looking at this and... It, and even in verse 3, as I briefly wrote earlier, God himself revealed his mystery plan to me. As you, read, as you read what I have written, you will understand my insight into this plan regarding Christ. God did not reveal it to previous generations, but now by his spirit, yeah. he has revealed it to his holy apostles and prophets. And verse 6, and this is God's plan. Both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches in, inherited by God's children. Both are part of the same body, and both enjoy the promise of blessings because they belong to Christ Jesus. Yeah. By God's grace and mighty power, I have been given the privilege of serving him by spreading his good news. It's interesting. It talks about the apostles and the prophets and Jesus yeah, the in cornerstone. That, in because that, the devil uh, did everything he could to destroy the fivefold ministry, destroy the apostles, destroy the prophets, destroy that what is being restored today and some and some churches still don't agree that we need apostles and prophets oh well, i guess i guess they don't know what the mystery is eh well scripture I mean, I'm, I'm just saying yeah, they won't have itself. the revelation of the knowledge of how deep it's going to get there's going to be more revelation and revelation poured out in these times and seasons than there has ever been mm -hmm. and we have to be in a place of covering of the ecclesia of the apostle who's hooked up to the cornerstone, the cape stone, and the prophet and the the teacher, as it says in Ephesians uh, chapter four verse eleven, and along with the, having the uh, pastor and the evangelist, all have to be working together. If we are going to get the full downloads, 
from heaven and understand the revelation of it. Otherwise, it's just words and maybe confusion because the religious spirit really knows how to bring confusion in if you don't have revelation of the Holy Spirit. That's profound. Write that down. Okay, so... Right. All right, so just a little bit of a segue here. Let's go to Mark chapter 4, uh, verses uh, 10. Mark chapter 4, verses 10 to 12. When, when we get to verse 15, it shows you how uh, the devil wants to steal something. Okay, so um, the purpose of parables, all right? So th this is the purpose of code. This is the purpose of the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's, let's go from, can you read from 10 to 15? Okay. Yeah. Um, the purpose of the parables. Afterwards, Jesus' disciples and those close to him remained behind to ask Jesus about his parables. He said to them, The privilege of intimately knowing the mystery of God's kingdom realm has been granted to you, but not to the others, where everything is revealed in parables. For even when they see what I do, they will not understand. Right. And when they hear what I say, they will learn nothing. Otherwise, they would repent and be forgiven. To how far? Fifteen. Well, well, uh, yeah. Okay, verse 13 now. And then he yeah. said to them, If you don't understand this parable, how will you understand any parable? Let me explain. The farmer sows the message of the kingdom. What falls on the beaten path represent those who hear the message, but immediately Satan appears and snatches it from their hearts. Okay. So verse 15 there. We'll go further. But uh, on verse 15... Um, Mm -hmm. what's the revelation of verse 15 why is what is Satan stealing well, he's stealing <coughs> the word mm -hmm. what's that are you stealing the word mm -hmm. so why is that good when you, or well, you, why, why is, if he can steal a word out of your heart mind and thoughts You've learned nothing. You're still in your sin. You're still lost. You're still... Mm -hmm. yeah. He's still got you in his kingdom. Right. That's what he's after. To keep you... If he can't get you into his kingdom in any depth, the least he can do mm -hmm. or try to do is to keep you out of God's kingdom. Okay. Or, let's say you've got it, but you don't have full understanding or revelation of it. Mm -hmm. Okay? So... Well, it'd be oh. like the, the being the children that are still feeding on the milk instead. They're, they haven't grown any. So that's going to come out of 16, 17, 18. So just read that now. So okay. In other words, you're, you're, you might be saved, but you're not a threat. Mm. Yeah. In other okay. words, you, you, you haven't understood kingdom principle of the kingdom of heaven coming on earth and dominion upon earth. But if you're as a child, all you want to do is stay in the city. I just want to stay in the play box, sandbox. I just want to play. I don't want no responsibility. Just give me some milk. Change my diapers. Hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Disobedience. Um, so where do you want to start from here? I'll just go. Well, you, you want anyway. first, well, first 15. Yeah, 15 you just go through it yeah. and, and explain that, what you were just saying when it comes through there as the revelation hits. Um, okay, so... Verse 13, if you don't understand this parable, how will you understand any parable? Let me explain. The farmer sows the message of the kingdom. What falls on the beaten path represents those who hear the message. But immediately Satan appears and snatches it from their hearts. Verse 16, and what is sown on gravel represents those who hear the message and receive it joyfully. But because their hearts fail to sink a deep root, they don't endure for long. For when trouble or persecution comes on account of the message, they immediately wilt and fall away. It's kind of like the dandelions. After a while, they'll wilt and fall away, and there's no real 
real sustenance, sustenance or, you know, roots that... Or the first challenge. You know, you're going to be challenged. I'll tell you, you're going to be challenged as a Christian. Um, but the, yeah. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Verse 18, And what is sown among thorns represents those who hear the message, but they allow the cares of this life and the seduction of wealth and the desires for other things to crowd out and choke the message so that it produces nothing. And they're and they are not going to be warriors. Ambass you know, like okay, keep on. Verse twenty, and what is sown on good soil represents those who open their hearts to receive the message, and mm -hmm. their lives bear good fruit. Amen. Some yield a harvest of thirty, sixty, and even a hundredfold. Amen. And we've been we have been seeing this happening in in the nations that we have planted seed. Jesus seed. Jesus, we plant, we, the Lord sent us there to plant it. And we've raised up disciples and, and, they, and we've done the discipleship and we've done the training and we continue to love them and cover them in apostolic uh, um, covering and on the fivefold ministry. And we're not physically there, but Jesus is. But they have, they are operating and continuing to grow and continuing to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're continuing to expand the, the, the kingdom of heaven on earth because they are sons and daughters who understand the principle of being... The sowing and the sowing, sowing and the, the reaping, sowing the seed and yeah, in good soil. They're not bearing, you know. The, you know there is that parable about how the master gave one servant uh, one, you know, one portion. He gave another servant uh, two portions. Gave another servant five portions, and uh, so the one with the five portions took it. And oh my goodness the five portions become ten portions. And so the master says, well done, good and faithful servant. And the one who had four portions, it became eight portions. Huh? Or what? Uh, yeah, two became four. Four. Yeah, and it, but that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Two became four, and it's not ten, but he said, well done, good and faithful servant. It doesn't matter what the amount, you doubled it. Yeah. And then there was the one who buried it. Oh, you're. I heard you were a very fearful, harsh, harsh, Master, so I didn't want to get in problems, so I just buried it so I can give it back to you. Well, you ungrateful servant, you didn't even put it in the bank for interest. I am going to take that from you and I'm going to tie that into the guy that's 10. You're out of here. I wonder if that's a child that has no substance in the Word of God. And it has the more about the fear of man. Or look, you know, King Saul had that. You know that that was that was his demise, because he wanted to please the people, and he and and he did everything to please the people and not please God. All right. So if you're about pleasing the people in your ministry, uh, you're going to be hearing the ripping of the prophet Samuel coming to rip whatever it is that that uh, God has given you off you because he's not going to allow you to continue to minister for your ministry or a people's ministry. It's all about the kingdom of God's ministry and the Father's ministry, period. That's it. So you so stop pleasing yourself. Stop pleasing man. Please God. Prophet Samuel. Prophet, uh, yeah, First Samuel, verse 15. First Samuel chapter 15 it's all about uh, Samuel taking uh, correction to Saul because he, he because of the Amal Amalekites uh, uh, he, he was supposed to kill King Agag he was supposed to do everything so he decided to bring all the spoils back mm -hmm. and please the people and he brought, and, and King Sam uh, but Saul was disciplined <coughs> by the prophet Samuel because God said, take it away from him. Take his mantle off him. Give it to another. 
And that's where David came in. So you want to give it to another? Operate like that. It'll be gone soon. And there was a lesson in uh, that <clears throat> that all of that nation were totally given over to demons. Yeah. And all of their livestock were demonized. And that was why Saul was to kill them, man, woman, and child, right. and animals. To get rid of all that. So <clears throat> when he disobeyed, yeah. He brought all of that back into God's yeah. kingdom. Yeah, and the and DNA of all yeah, these people. There it is, the obedience versus disobedience. Yeah, yeah. that's in Samuel 15, verses 20 to 22. Yeah. So let's go to verse 8 here. In, we're going back to Ephesians Mark, chapter 3. We're in Ephesians. Yeah, we're in Ephesians. So that, that gives you, an, I wanted to bring in the application of uh, the parable of the mystery and why the religious spirit didn't get it, and why some things were hidden. So um, now we're going to do the uh, what they call the purpose of the mis uh, of what the mis mystery is all about. We just in, in chapter three, verses one to seven, it talks about how the mystery is revealed. The gospel of Jesus, the gospel, of, uh, the mystery of the gospel is revealed. Now we're going to talk about how the mystery of the gospel has the direct purpose uh, in our lives. So we'll read from. 8 to 13. Okay. This is the new living again back at now. Okay. Um, Though I am the least deserving of all God's people, he graciously gave me the privilege of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. I was chosen to explain to everyone this mysterious plan that God, the creator of all things, had kept secret from the beginning. God's purpose in all this was to use the, the church to display his wisdom in its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was his eternal plan, which he carried out through Christ Jesus our Lord. And because of Christ and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. Mm -hmm. So please don't lose heart because of my trials here. I am suffering for you, so you should feel honored. Wow. The glory carriers. Mm -hmm. The DNA, we are carrying the DNA, the mystery of God in our DNA. We are made in not only in the image, but also in the substance of Adonai Elohim, Yeshua HaMashiach, and the Ruach HaKadosh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We are have the same DNA. Divine nature activated, then actualized through the Holy Spirit and fire. As it says in Luke chapter 3, 16, not only will you be baptized in water, but you shall be baptized in the fire of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Boom. Okay, so the mystery of that. So, um, <clears throat> uh, what I have, it, says, it has been revealed by the, by the Spirit, uh, in verse, uh, I think it's verse nine. Okay, uh, yeah, and it makes 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 us all to see the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ. So the word assembly there. What do you think that word assembly stands for? Well, it's ecclesia. So, uh, so the fellowship in the ecclesia. Uh, <laughs> It has been revealed by the Spirit. Hallelujah. What is the fellowship of the mystery that was hidden in Abba Father, Adonai Elohim, who has created all things through Yeshua HaMashiach, that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the ecclesia and the ecclesia, the bride of Christ, in verse 10. You want to read that again in verses nine, nine and ten. Okay. Um, um, so, okay, I've switched back over now to the Passion translation. Okay. My passion is to enlighten every person to this divine mystery. It was hidden for ages past until now, and kept a secret in the heart of God, the Creator of all. The purpose of this was to unveil before every throne and rank of angelic orders oh. in the heavenly realm 
God's full and direct wisdom revealed through the church. This perfectly wise plan was destined from eternal ages and fulfilled completely in our Lord Jesus Christ, so that now we have boldness through him and free access as kings before the Father because of our complete confidence in Christ's faithfulness. I hope you see the way that we're setting this up as that we did in Ephesians chapter 6, how the first four verses was, was getting the children in order. And then verses uh, you know, uh, 5 to uh, 9 was, was getting the teenagers or getting, getting the servants in order so that they could become warriors from 10 to 20. So you know, the, the being brilliant in the basics allows you to be bold in all the things, all in all, and what we are called in the fivefold ministry and all the gifts. So, um, so the, all that is being made known to the ecclesia, through the fivefold ministry, and to the bride of Christ. So, in verse, again, in verses nine and ten, also, uh, I'll read this out of the Amplified. Also, to enlighten all men, and make plain to them what is the plan regarding the Gentiles, and providing for them the salvation of all men. Can you get the NLT? Got it? Or, 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 or no, yeah, and 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 the and it says of the mystery kept hidden through the ages and concealed until now, in the mind of God, in the mind who created all things by grace, in the mind of God. In Philippians two five, it says that we need the mind of Yeshua. We need the mind of Christ. In other words, the revelation of that is going to be continue to give us more revelation and understanding. In verse 10 it says, The purpose is that through the ecclesia, the complicated and many-sided wisdom of God, that, remember the puzzle, everything I was talking about, the mysteries? All these mysteries, these puzzles, okay, the complicated and many-sided uh, of the wisdom of Adonai uh, in all its infinity and variety of innumerable aspects might be made known to the angelic rulers, okay, and authorities and, princip and principalities and powers in heavenly places. This is in accordance uh, with the terms of the eternal and timeless purpose which he has realized and carried into effect in the person of Christ Jesus our Lord. So, the resurrection life, for now and forevermore. Do you see it? You know, when, when, I, when I got this revelation of how that was resurrection life now and eternal. That, you know, um, all the rest that are, <laughs> it says the principalities and powers in heavenly places, uh, basically the religious church has fallen asleep to all this and don't understand this. And the religious speed, spirit is keeping them in bondage and, and keeping them in a fog so that uh, they stay in a place of disorder. They stay in a place where they can't understand what or have the knowledge to through the Holy Spirit, and they're not allowing the Holy Spirit to work through them, so they can come into the revelation of this, so that uh, of the mystery of God. So, uh, any any comment on that before we move on, or because I like what you said in verse thirteen. What have you got anything there, Ralph? It looks like you're digging. Yes, you're digging on something. You got you got, a, you well, got your silver pick up, your yeah. gold pick. You're digging and, and you're shoveling. Good stuff out of that word. Bring it alive. In, uh, uh, I'm going to read 11 and 12 okay. in the King James. Okay. According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. We have boldness and access to the presence of God, to the mind of Christ, with boldness and confidence by the faith of him. Most of the new translations translate it faith in him. It's not my ability to have faith in Jesus that uh, gives me access and boldness in the presence of the Father. It's the faith of him, of Jesus. It's the DNA. It's yeah. So that faith... And him, uh, I've looked this up, are in what they call a genitive case, meaning they show relationship 
or possession or source. So this faith is sourced in Jesus. It's not in me. It's his faith that enables me. So all of this access was bought and paid for by Jesus. Amen. Yeah. And there are, of course, there are a number of places where it talks about our having faith in him. So there's there's room for our faith in him. But most, several places, only the King James has gets that, the point of that. It's his faith, not ours in this case. Okay, so there's a scripture, it's impossible to please God? Mm. With some of the scripture around that? Mm. It, without faith? Without faith. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's impossible to please God. Mm-hmm. So, faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Of Christ Jesus in us. It's impossible. It, and, and as far as healing, when we come for healing, I put up on the website, come. Yeah. You, you need to come in faith to be healed. You, you have to come and have uh, faith to be healed. Amen. Yeah. There, there, there's something on our part that's that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us, but we're seated in heavenly places in him, mm-hmm. with him, in heaven, in the spirit. So uh, we are so connected that we are a part of him. Mm-hmm. So part of that DNA. Mm-hmm. Okay. In, anything else? Yeah. You, you, um, yeah, keep going. Keep going. Okay. So the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ um, has been hidden in in many... Uh, because we, we don't have the revelation... We don't have the understanding. We, it's hard for us to get the knowledge because we're not connecting the dots. And um, we're not allowing the Holy Spirit to allow those things to grow in us. So uh, so when you look in, in Ephesians chapter 3, uh, the first part of it, the mystery being revealed in verses 1 to 7 of the gospel is revealed. In verses 8 to 13, it talks about how the purpose of the mystery is going to be uh, of Christ Jesus. That mystery of faith of him, in him we, that we are. Now, uh, verses 14 to 21, if you can read this, this is, all of, this is great in regards to the application of the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is the application of it, or the understanding of it, for those who are trying to quantify and measure it. Here you go. Okay, Les. So verses 14 to... 14 to 21. Okay. And we'll bring that to an end. This other stuff we'll do next week, but this is this has been good. So I kneel humbly in awe before the Father of our Lord Jesus the Messiah, the perfect Father of every father and child in heaven and on the earth. And I pray that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor until supernatural strength floods your innermost being with his divine might and explosive power. Then, by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside of you and the resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Mm -hmm. Then you will be empowered to discover what every holy one experiences the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. How deeply intimate and far-reaching is his love. How endearing and inclusive it is. Endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Mm -hmm. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. (laughs) And then now we offer up to God all the glorious praise that rises from every church or every gathering in every generation through Jesus Christ, and all that will yet be manifest through time and eternity. Amen. Amen. So verse 14 again. 14. 
I'm just helping you a bit here. You're helping me? A little bit. Um, verse 14, And then our immature maturity will end, and we will not be easily shaken by trouble. We didn't even read this. Oh, I'm in four. The wrong yeah, you went down to four. Back to three. Yeah, 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 yeah. It jumped on me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Verse 14. Yeah. So I kneel humbly in awe. Okay. I kneel humbly in awe. Okay. So what kind of fear is that? When we stand in awe of the Father, in awe of the Lord. Is that a reverent fear of God that we that it's we're a, so? It's a, it's a, that's the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The awe of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So, your point is? <laughs> <laughs> the awe of Yahweh. Uh -huh. uh, last week you preached on the the fear of Adonai, the fear of God. Okay. Well, here is the fear uh, of the Lord. Yeah. So this here is the awe of God. And you've heard me at times say, well, you know, there's an energized awe. There's a silent wonder, you know, of being where God is. But that energized awe, this awe, this holy reverent fear. Mm. Isn't that radical amazement of who our God is? Mm -hmm. That's where these things of came out mm -hmm. Ener so uh, resurrection life unconditional love unconditional forgiveness unmeasured acceptance and love is, is this part of our foundation that can't be measured that energized awe that uh, where you read in, in, in verse 2021 if you can read that last 2021 we'll bring that to an end but that's that's the awe that we need to be as servants of the living God, to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all of this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. Mm -hmm. He will outdo them all, for His miraculous power constantly energizes you. Energizes you. And you know... This is where, for whosoever stands in the need of healing, yes, you could say and speak into each and every situation for Judith, for um, Nathaniel, like yeah, Nathan's wife, right? Yes, um, Sarah. Sarah, for, for Carol Flores, for whosoever whatever the situation is, whether it's a mighty miracle of healing, which when we stand before him and we exercise the authority we have in him, we can say, I receive my miracle of healing, right? Which Nicholas mentioned, you know, he talked about that the weekend he was here. So we will speak and say to you who is in need of a miracle in your body, in the finances, in family that would th the miracle of salvation and healing and wholeness in a family never doubt God's mighty power to work in you Amen. to accomplish what needs to be accomplished in your physical body and accomplish all of this he will achieve not he might he will achieve infinitely more Amen. than your greatest request the biggest request and ask that you could have of him, he will achieve even greater than that. He will achieve infinitely more than your most unbelievable dream. Mm. What is God's dream that he's placed in your heart and you haven't seen the fulfillment of that yet? He will achieve infinitely more than your most unbelievable dream and he will exceed your wildest imagination. Mm -hmm. There's lots of people out there with pretty wild imaginations. Um, the, the, these visionaries, the, the ones who have wild imaginations, uh, sometimes and if without God can take a person way off track, but with God, with God, that is the power. He will exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly 
not every once in a while, constantly, ever, ever, like energizer, constantly energizes you. So even be, as we can confidently say, he will do this, his mighty power, mighty power to work in you and to accomplish all these things. We offer up to him, even ahead of time, that ta-da, thanking him before yeah. the manifestation yeah. of the event. We offer up to God all the glorious praise that arises from every gathering of his people in every generation through Jesus Christ and all that will yet be manifest through time now and eternity. So even if we may not totally always see everything made manifest in our time, it will get done and into eternity because we, are, we also share with him in eternity. Amen. We are in him, he in us, so eternity. And that will be made manifest in Jesus' name. Amen. Another way to look at the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ, you've got a bag over your head. Everything is about you and that revelation, all that the Holy Spirit does or the Father does, <laughs> you, it just takes the bag off your head and now you can see it. It's no longer a mystery. It's now revelation. It's now knowledge. It's now truth. It's now real. There it is. So come. If you, if you need healing, come to the house of healing. <laughs> come to Holy Spirit Sands this Sunday, 1010. And uh, come and, and we will pray for you. Come in faith and we'll pray for you in faith. Um, last Sunday, uh, uh, Sarah was preaching in, um, in Ghana. And uh, there, there are leaders uh, for Resurrection Life in Ghana. And uh, the enemy hit her, and she was paralyzed on the right side, and sh she lost all speech on Sunday. Um, uh, Bishop Nathaniel uh, contacted me, and uh, will you pray for Sarah? And we pray, and I prayed. Well, this morning, all pe a lot of people praying, but sometimes, you know, the Lord will say, Go call and that person and pray together. Because it says here in verse 14 of Ephesians chapter 3, For this re reason, seeing the greatness of this plan by which are built together in Christ. In other words, the Lord, we are built together in Christ. So the Lord will bring his uh, intercessors together and pray in Christ. And I bow my knees before Adonai Elohim and the Lord Jesus Christ. When we do that together, we move... Uh, Heaven unto earth. Mm -hmm. And heaven is a place of healing. It's eternal. So we need to understand that not only is it a house of healing, but it's a house of expectation. It's a house of revelation. It's a place of understanding. It's a place of revelation. It's a place of boldness. It's a place of energized awe, radical amazement, silent wonder. So it's a mystery. But God will reveal his mystery to you if you come in faith for what the, it, it is that you're hungry for. And uh, so resurrection life, unconditional love, unconditional forgiveness, unmeasured acceptance. And uh, we come into a place in walking in unity in covenant relationship with our Father in heaven, with the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, but also those who are in the bride of Christ, the body of Christ together. So praise the Lord. Amen. So FBR equals CTCC. That's like an equation for you for a Manitoba uh, telephone system. Hmm. You know, FBR. Okay, you got your FBR. Have, uh, what kind of cord is that? What, what's the what's the dimensions? Well, you got to have faith. You got to be able to believe, and it has to be at a place that can receive. You've got to have a good coax to receive from heaven. In other words, it can't be broken off. It's got to be able to receive the current in faith. Hmm. Equals. Well. C T C C. It, it, there has to be a, you really. There has to be. Care, you have to really care. You have to be in a place that you're going to trust Adonai, and and you got to trust him. And you, there's got to be a commitment and covenant for this to work together. If you only got faith, belief, and receiving, but you don't have any care or trust or commitment or covenant with your God, how can you connect in faith? In, in believing, in receiving, there's, there's no connection. You've got to connect. So what have you got, honey? Let's I bring it to you. Oh. So that's what FBR equals CTCC. You've got to be in a place, you have to have faith in your heart. You've got to believe 
And you need to go and read our faith statement and mission statement for Resurrection Life. We have that on our, on our, uh, on our website, but it's also right in the ark of that side. There's a lot of information there. And you'll understand who we are and who we've been for 33 years and raising up other disciples and what we believe and how we receive and how much we care and how much trust has been put together in unity and the commitment to one another through the covenant of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the formula God gave me. <laughs> FBR equals CTCC. All righty then. So, would you... So, so we can close with yeah. that word. You know, I mean, this is a, you know, it's a prayer on fire, basically, okay. um, is where this comes from. But it's a mystery, and it's taken from Psalm 19, verse three and four. Um, without a sound, without a word, without a voice being heard, yet all the world can see its story. Everywhere its gospel is clearly read so all may know. So we can say, Lord, I hear you even when you don't say a word. I feel you as you rise within me. Your presence is unmistakable. And that comes from no, we have to know our God. Know him. Your presence is unmistakable. Your glory is a mystery I long to unravel. You are grace and light power and might. You are the first and the last. You are the question everyone asks and the answer too many refuse to accept. Hmm. To me you are savior, father and friend. You are the beauty that lives inside of me and the one who gave me joy when you saved my soul. I will not wrestle with truth simply because it is too high for me to understand. You are immortal and eternal. You are always, you always were and always will be. Yahweh, men cannot pronounce your name. So the Y-H-W-H, men cannot pronounce your name. I am crucified with you, mm. yet seated with you in heavenly places. You are near and far, present with me, yet also with others. My mind cannot not grasp such things, so I will embrace them with my heart. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that cool? That's, yeah. So as, we, as we're bringing this to a close, and uh, Pastor Ralph is going to be teaching this Saturday at 1.30 at the Sanctuary, <laughs> uh, Apostolic Resurrection Life Center, ARC. So come for that teaching. It's going to be all of it's going to be holy, and it's going to be on fire. So just come jump in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And Saturday night, I'm going to be teaching on the lifestyle of worship. So, uh, and then Sunday, uh, Leslie's preaching. Yeah. you got some fire. I guess we Marlene's see. going to be doing the worship, and you got the fire. The ladies on fire. <laughs> Women of wow. Wow. So uh, with that, I'm going to uh, give this to Pastor Ralph for the, uh, for the blessing as we come to a close. So until we see you next Thursday. God is in the house, to your house. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> From Numbers chapter 6, the blessing that the Lord, <clears throat> uh, well, I guess the word would be commanded. He said it must be prayed by the high priest every day over all of the nation of Israel over all the nations of believers. So from number 6, starting about verse 22, it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom, placing his names upon you. Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord our provider. And the Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. The Lord bless you and keep you until we see you That's Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> oh, yes. Saturday, a Sunday, but back here a week from now, Thursday. So 
I pray that the mystery of the gospel of Jesus Christ is no longer a puzzle. Mm -hmm. You've got the knowledge and understanding. Till next time. Blessings. Mm -hmm.